I'm going to talk to you about this amazing, truly amazing new technology that is poised to turn the world of money, payments, and finance on its head. It's really mind-bending, so please pay attention. I was born in Argentina, the bottom of the world. These are some of the things that I experienced in my lifetime. We were one of the richest countries in the world in the early 20th century. In 1989, when I was in senior in college, uh, the inflation rate reached 12,000, 12,000 in a year. In 2001, there was another crisis. People started uh, distrusting the currency and withdrawing, uh, converting pesos to dollars and taking them, them out of the banks because they saw that the inflation was going to eat, eat all the, the value, right? That crisis ended with the uh, resignation of the president, a succession crisis, six presidents in a row, and the largest uh, sovereign debt default in history. That happened in my country. And the reason I'm in the United States is because of that. This is the, w the, the way we live in many countries in the world today. It's not that it just happens to some countries. Most countries in the world are ravaged uh, by inflation and the loss of value of their currencies. These are some of the situations, some of the countries. Uh, some people take it with humor. And, uh, but the truth is that the lives of many, many people are affected by corruption, mismanagement, and incompetence. That happens everywhere in the world today. Uh, at the risk of uh, stating the obvious, uh, poverty is incredible in the world. And many, many billions of people, all, over a billion people live uh, in extreme poverty today. And the reason is that the current financial paradigm is tilted in the favor of the gray, gray countries there, right? The green areas are the, the places where there's no banking infrastructure, no infrastructure altogether, right? Roads, electricity, uh, payment systems, ATMs. If money doesn't flow, life doesn't flow. And therefore, these countries at the bottom, those green countries, they all uh, rely on remittances. Money remittances are the lifeline for billions of people today. And people like us uh, come to the north, work, and send money back to our families and, and support them. The flows are growing, keep growing. Should, this, should, this is a situation that should stop, right? We should have, every country should develop itself and not have to rely on external help, right? That's what really makes a dignified life. The problem with the remittances is that they're very high cost. Very high, especially for the least privileged and least developed countries. In Africa, for example, these are the cost of sending money within Africa. 23% of the money sent is taken out as a fee paid by the sender. So less money reaches the destination. But there's good news. The World Bank estimated that if five percentage points were reduced from the fees, 16 billion, additional billion, would reach the destination countries. Imagine the impact that, that money could have in the economies, right? That money could help build community. It's 16 billion dollars every year could reach the destination countries. So why am, am I talking about this? Because this new technology can help with all of these things. And another thing that is interesting is that we, talk, we heard about uh, the penetration of mobile and the in internet access in the world is a look at these staggering numbers, the growth numbers of the internet in, in the world. People are having access to the global economy, theoretically at least, for the first time ever through mobile and the internet. But the reality is that they have access to connectivity, devices, Facebook, distractions. <laughs> but it doesn't really help them in their development, in their life, right? So, I want to ask you to please imagine if, for the first case, if there was a way for the happy Zimbabwean guy at the beginning to protect the value of the hard-earned cash that he has in an alternative, and an option, store it elsewhere. Imagine in the second case, if a mother were able to receive two additional dollars from his son in London, two dollars, is probably more than she can make in a month. And imagine if there were a merchant anywhere in the world, and I know many of those, that could collect payments from anywhere in the world via a mobile phone. That is possible today. 
And I know it's going to sound like a pitch, like a sales pitch, but I'm not representing a brand. <laughs> I'm just excited to introduce to you a technology that I truly believe is going to be uh, life-altering for millions. Bitcoin is not only money, currency, you've heard it uh, related to crime, uh, Silk Road, and all these things in the news. But Bitcoin is, I like to summarize it as three things. One is digital payments, a digital payments system. Second is digital money, or currency. And three, most importantly to me, is digital platform that allows for many other innovations that we'll explain in a few minutes. So those three things are amazing in themselves because they're all into one. But the more mind-bending uh, feature of this technology is that, is that it's distributed across the internet and it's not controlled by any central authority. It's controlled by itself, by very complex mathematical formulas in itself. So with Bitcoin, I can send payments anywhere in the world instantaneously any value, any amount, five cents, one dollar, five hundred dollars. It's secure. The payments are unalterable. They cannot be counterfeited. And it's mobile to mobile, mobile to, mo to computer. It's, it's really simple. As digital money, remember this, the Zimbabwean person, the transactions are not measured in euro or yen or dollars or any uh, currency. It, they have a, their own denomination, which is called a Bitcoin. The unit of the denomination is a Bitcoin. And the value, the dollar value of that Bitcoin, is determined in an open market. It's just as any other foreign currency that we know today. You know, there's a currency pairs in every, every country, right? So, and it's counter, counterfeit proof. And <laughs> there's no inflation because the total, the rate of growth of the Bitcoins in circulation and the total are capped, are predetermined by the technology itself. So it's revolutionary for many reasons, but two of those are that it's distributed or decentralized. And that means that it's not controlled by any central authority. And this is incredible, <laughs> bear with me. Whenever we execute a payment, whenever we execute any transaction, even in a contractual relationship, there's always an external third party behind us attesting to that transaction, verifying that the transaction is real, that it took place. Someone is a custodian of the contracts or the, the agreements, right? In this technology, there's no central authority because all those rules, all, all the enforcement and accountability of any relationship is handled by mathematics. That's why they're called math based currencies or math-based trust. Trust is enforced by the mathematics behind it. It's amazing. And another reason why it's revolutionary is that the identity, every time we make a payment, we give our identity. Every single time we make a payment on a, with a credit card or a debit card, we're transmitting our own personal information with that transmission. With this technology, that is separated. The payment goes one way, and the identity stays behind. So it is very beneficial for consumers because you're not exposing your personal identification information. And the merchants don't receive information that could hold us accountable for loss or theft, right? And the most important thing is that all of the, 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 the technology is payments today or finance today, but in the future it could be many more things because there are applications beyond this protocol, this platform. It's like TCP, IP, which is the network, hidden network, on top of which the World Wide Web and email work, right? This is a technology, an, insip, a, a, an emerging technology, on top of which other functionalities and applications will be built. For example, voting, the vote is going to reach the destination and it's ne never going to be uh, altered. And fundamentally, it could unearth all of the hidden value in the e underground economies. The mystery of capital that Hernando de Soto and many others have studied, System D, these people could underwrite, could get credit for the first time by being able to securitize an asset that they have and is hidden somewhere in that economy. There's a huge ecosystem being formed today, a groundswell of innovators, entrepreneurs, intellectuals. These are some of them. Of course, this technology has a lot of challenges. 
It has regulation, transparency, speculation, security, disruption of the status quo. This is going to change the world, could change the world. We talked about Facebook, about connectivity. I think that the internet has enabled us to connect each other amazingly. But we have a debt. A debt is all of those dark shadows in the middle that have not been connected yet. And I truly believe that this technology is revolutionary. It can help us really change the world. Thank you.